Hello everyone, uh, welcome to today's webinar and introduction to Google for Nonprofits. We'll give some time to everyone, for everyone to join. In the meantime, a quick introduction about myself. I'm Alessia, I'm a program manager in the Google for Nonprofits team. I'm delivering this webinar from my house here in San Francisco. Um, so it's live. You have the chance to ask questions throughout the whole webinar. Um, using the chat box on your right. Uh, my colleagues will do their best to answer your questions live, but we'll make sure to save some time at the end uh, for your uh, Q&A slide. All right, um, let's get started. Here is a quick overview on the agenda for today. Um, I'm going to give an overview of Google for Nonprofits and the products that belong to our program. We're also going to look at some of the most common nonprofit challenges to see how Google products um, can be mixed and matched uh, to be transformed into solutions to the most common nonprofit challenges that we, we've heard from nonprofits like yours. Um, we'll have time uh, for live Q&As again at the end, um, and uh, we'll save some time for answer all your questions. But if you have questions while I'm presenting, again, my colleagues will be answering the questions on the chat. So feel free to use the chat box. We've seen a lot of interactions uh, in the past live streams. This live stream will be available on our channel. Please subscribe to the channel so that you can always be up to date with everything that's going on in Google for Nonprofits. We're planning a few webinars in the future, so you can always be up to date. Um, and you can also find on the channel recording of past webinars. We've also started um, new series of tips and tricks uh, on our products. So if you're interested, just hit the subscribe button. All right, let's get started. Nonprofits are changing the world. Um, I feel privileged to uh, work for the Google for Nonprofits team and have the chance to talk to nonprofits on a daily basis. And we know that when it comes to nonprofits, your work is your passion. Whether your organization is bringing clean and safe drinking water to everyone on the planet, like Charity Water here in the picture, or whether your focus is caring for people or natural places in your local communities, we know that organizations like yours are changing the world every day. But we also know, because we've heard from you, that this comes with a unique set of challenges, like, for example, managing volunteers, coordinating board members. These are all um, challenges and tasks that, are, that belong to the nonprofit sector, um, fundraising, running operations on a shoestring budget. We're also aware that with the coronavirus outbreak, um, challenges have become even more unique for you. How do you help everyone feel connected while working from home? Um, how do you help everyone feel part of the team while working from home? How can you still recruit and train uh, volunteers and more board members that are just joining your organization when everyone is now working from home? And how, you move, uh, how do you move in-person activities and events online, like for example, fundraising events online, now that live events um, are not a thing? If these challenges sound familiar to you, you are not alone. We recently sent a survey um, to nonprofits all around the world, and we had more than 1,200 responses. And we have heard from you that these challenges um, are pretty typical nowadays. So before we get into solutions and before we try to solve some of those challenges together, um, let me give you a quick overview on the Google for Nonprofits program and our products. These a uh, webinar is going to be an introduction on the program. So we're going to keep it eye level and give you information on the products and how you can turn um, some products into solutions. If you need more specific trainings, uh, let us know. There is a survey um, that you can uh, fill in at the end of this webinar to give us some feedback. But also, as I said at the beginning of this webinar, we have a lot of recorded live streams, basically one for each product that we have in the platform where we go very in depth with the products. And those webinars can really help you um, be skilled on the products that belong to the platform and how to use them.
All right, so this is an overview on the products that belong to the Google for Nonprofits program. When you become part of the Google for Nonprofits program, you can access these products for free. Um, and our solutions are aimed at tackling nonprofit challenges, whether it's about, for example, improving collaboration through G Suite, helping you now work from home or collaborate across different time zones. Um, G Suite can be your best friend. When you want to reach out to more people with search advertising, then maybe you can do that through ad grants. Um, or if you want to, for example, inspire your supporter about your mission and accomplishments, you can do that with YouTube and Mats. Uh, our products can help nonprofits like yours become more visible and efficient to spend more time on a mission and focus on what really matters to you. Now, it's a lot, um, so we'll try to go um, and give an overview on each of these products. But what I like to say to nonprofits that are just onboarding uh, on the platform, that are just start getting started with the Google for Nonprofits program, um, is that it may feel it can feel overwhelming at the beginning. So sit down and try to really understand what's the priority for your nonprofit right now. You don't need to activate all the products. Um, at the start. You don't need to learn how to use all the products at the start. If visibility uh, online is what you're looking for, then maybe you should be focusing on ad grants. And if um, working together is what you're looking for, and if you are looking for co collaboration tools, then G Suite um, is what you're looking for as well. Um, so try to sit down and to prioritize um, the products that you need to activate based on the challenges that you're facing right now. Okay, so the first product is G Suite for Nonprofits. G Suite for Nonprofits, it's our collaboration tool. Um, with, non with Google for Nonprofits, uh, you get the equivalent of G Suite Basic um, and shared drives as well, and no cost. G Suite Basic is normally offered at $6 per user per month, but it's free for nonprofits. And with this, you, get, you can get as many users as you want. So basically all your board members, all your staff um, and your volunteers can get a G Suite for Nonprofits account for free. G Suite for Nonprofits, it's our collaboration tool again. Um, it means that it helps you communicate more professionally and more efficiently because everyone at your nonprofit can get an email address with the domain of your nonprofits. So emails coming from you and from your volunteers will have the domain uh, of your nonprofit and this helps um, donors or people you're talking to um, to kind of trust the communications that you are sending uh, the communication for example for fundraising is not coming from a personal email address anymore but it's coming from the email address uh, with your nonprofit's domain with G Suite uh, for nonprofits, you also get uh, to store your files. Uh, we get uh, 30 gigas per user. You also have access to shared drives, which are not normally um, included in G Suite Basic. The G Suite for nonprofit suite gives you a chance to collaborate. We'll go a bit more in depth into this later, but with access to uh, docs, presentations, Google Drive, you can really collaborate and doesn't matter where, where, where your staff is, doesn't matter if everyone is working from home, you can really collaborate on the same document at the same time. People can leave comments, you can leave suggestions, you can see the history of the documents. So if you, for example, made a change and by missed, and that was a mistake and you want to revert back to an old version of the document, you can do that. Um, so definitely this improves collaborations in your team, but also makes sure that you can be very efficient when it comes to working uh, on different documents or presentations. With G Suite for Nonprofits, you also get access to Google Classroom. Uh, we wanted to highlight this here because we know that with coronavirus, uh, when it comes to nonprofits that uh, work, uh, for example, um, with uh, kids or need to uh, train uh, people um, and uh, had to move their operations online, Google Classroom was very useful. Uh, we know that G Suite for nonprofits, so the equivalent of G Suite Basic with a few additions, sometimes is just not enough for nonprofits that are growing or that have 
a need for uh, increased storage or more security and access controls. That's why we have recently launched G Suite Business and Enterprise Discounts for Nonprofits. Again, pick the plan that works best for your organization. G Suite for Nonprofits can be perfect for small to medium sized organizations um, that need the basic tools for collaborations or communications. But we've also launched G Suite Business and Enterprise discounts because, again, we know that nonprofits that grow need increased storage. So, with Business and Enterprise for Nonprofits, you get uh, one terabyte cloud storage per users um, and you get a lot of different functions. So sorry, I know people are having uh, some troubles um, hearing, so I can try to just raise the volume of my mic. Just give me a second. Okay, that should work. Let me know if it's better. Otherwise, I'll try to speak up. Okay, so with business and enterprise for nonprofits, um, again, you get increased storage and you get a lot of different functions that are very, very useful, uh, especially if you want to have more control on your users. If, for example, you have um, people that are working on a project base uh, for your nonprofit and you need to control access to their files. So again, this can feel overwhelming. So try to really understand what your nonprofit needs right now and maybe start with GC for nonprofits. And if you see that you have um, a need for increased storage, more security access, you need tools to access file across all your organization, then maybe you can upgrade to um, different and more advanced solutions. One thing that is important to know, which is in the enterprise, you get um, advanced Google Meet functions. So you can have, for example, um, the option to live stream your meetings in your organization, which is useful if you have a lot of people to talk to. Uh, you can record the meetings and meetings can host up to 250 people. These functions are called advanced meet features, um, but in response to coronavirus, they are free for everyone. So even for those who are on G Suite for nonprofits until the end of September. Then after that, the meet functions will revert according to what's your current edition. So if you are, for example, on G Suite Business, then you will have the chance to um, video conference to up to 100 people uh, with Google Meet. This is an example. We like to share examples of nonprofit like yours and how they've used different product and tools um, from the Google for Nonprofits program. Go Volunteer, it's a nonprofit. Um, based in Berlin. We visited them last year and they have a very, very cool story. Basically what they do, they have an online platform where they match volunteer projects to people that want to help in, the, in their cities. And at the beginning of Volunteer was just a project that was born uh, from an idea of a group of friends. There was no organization. But since 2015, Grow Volunteer has grown in size and in scope from that idea and has now connected more than 250,000 unique users to uh, more than 3,000 volunteering opportunities. And when we were talking to the founder, Malte, which is one of the people there in the picture, um, he told us that G Suite for Nonprofits really helped them to create a structure for their nonprofits, create a structure for uh, the, the group uh, and for, for the working group and really start to help them start to work together, collaborate professionally and then achieve all the milestones that they are achieving right now. We have a case study with them, so if you're curious, again, you can find a lot of our case studies on the um, YouTube channel. YouTube nonprofit program, uh, YouTube can be a very, very great tool for you if you want to engage audiences on video. Uh, videos can really uh, inspire people. You can show your mission through video and you can 
drive traffic through your website directly because with the if you're part of the YouTube nonprofit program, you have access to link anywhere cards. So you can drive traffic to your website or to what matters to you directly through the video. Nonprofits also get access to shoot or edit videos at YouTube Spaces, which is great if you want to create more professional videos. And with the YouTube nonprofit program, you also get custom nonprofit support. So uh, you have a dedicated support channel in case you need help with your YouTube account. Video is great to inspire empathy uh, for your cause. It can feel quite intimidating at the beginning, but we delivered a live stream last year to explain how to use video in a way that it's easy for you, uh, giving you a lot of tips on how to create a video on a budget, basically, and still inspire um, empathy for your cause. It's very, very important nowadays also to use videos to bring offline events online, for example. So if you want to deliver a live stream to bring one of your events online, exactly as I'm doing now, that's, um, that's something that is possible through YouTube. If I can do it, you can do it too. So it's pretty, it's pretty simple. It just takes some time to, you know, organize the event. Uh, we'll go into details later, but it's definitely something that you can do. And that's a good way to still connect to your audience, even though we're sheltering in place. Invisible People is a great example of using nonprofit, using YouTube to inspire people about your mission and to educate people at scale. Invisible People is a nonprofit that uses YouTube to share the individual unseen stories of homeless people throughout the U.S. Mark, uh, the founder, has is like going around the U.S. and uh, also beyond the U.S. interviewing homeless people, sharing their stories, and his channel has grown uh, to two hundred and fifty thousand subscribers now, and really has Mark has been able to educate people at scale um, and really raise awareness about homelessness. So this is a huge example and a great example of using YouTube to uh, to make people aware, to educate people about your cause. Ad grants. Uh, ad grants, very great tool to enhance your online visibility. If you're part of the Google for Nonprofits program, you can get uh, up to uh, $10,000 a month of free text ads on google.com. What this means is that Google Ad Grants works just like Google Ads online, um, displaying your message to people who are searching for nonprofit like yours. So for example, if your nonprofit is, uh, uh, for example, donating clothes, right? And people are searching for places to donate their clothes, then your ads can be displayed when people are searching exactly for what you offer. And this is a very, very good way to just raise awareness for your cause, but also drive website activity. And what's very unique about online advertising is that it's fully trackable and fully measurable. So with Google Ads, you can see how many people found you through the ad, but also how many people converted online, thanks to the fact that they found your nonprofits on Google search. So you can see how many people donated online, how many people, for example, filled in a form to get in touch with you and so on. So the fact that you can track and that you can measure your marketing effort is very, very, very important. And last but not least, Google Earth and Maps. We'll see a case study that combines Google Ads um, and Google Earth and Maps in a second. But with Google Maps, you can create custom maps Nonprofits get access to $250 a month of additional maps credit to customize maps for whatever you need. For example, you can connect people to resources. You can create a donor map if you are working across different locations and you want to share where you are making an impact and make sure that donors can visualize your impact. That's a very, very good tool. And with Google Earth, you can use creation tools again to create stories which is a great tool, again, if you're working across different locations to show your impact and use Google Earth to add pictures or videos and create the story of your impact and the story of your nonprofit. For Funder, this is the latest case study we, um, we produced. 
Food Finder is a nonprofit on a mission to reduce food insecurity in the US. So what they do, it's a it's an app and it's also a website and people can find the closest food pantry uh, to to them thanks to the map and can basically um, become more food secure when they need it the most. In March 2020, Google searches for food pantries were the highest they had been in five years. And with many Americans at risk of food insecurity, maybe for the first time, alongside millions of Americans and people that were already vulnerable, uh, finding assistance was critical. So in 2013, uh, Jack Griffin uh, was a high school student and he recognized the major gap in information while he was still in high school and he noticed that it was difficult for people it was difficult for people to get connected to the right resources that they needed. So using a map instead of a list, users are able to see the locations of food assistance providers, but also the density of resources and the supply of the emergency food. So Jack is using maps credits to um, customize the maps and making sure that people can get connected to the resources that they need that are closer to them. In addition to Google Maps, uh, Food Finder is also using ad grants to raise awareness and help their organization rise to the top of the search. So when someone is searching for food near them, a Google ad can uh, be displayed to that user and basically bring Food Finder at the top of the search results. And we think this is a great success story because um, with COVID creating more issues in food security, Food Finder went from helping an average of 700 people a day to 3,000 a day um, during the coronavirus outbreak. And the traffic um, on the site increased by eight times. So Jack was really able to reach out to a lot of people and really help people that needed um, food during the crisis. Okay, so we just saw a few examples on how nonprofits have used some of our Google products. I gave you a quick introduction and overview on the different products. But again, the products can be turned into solution when you mix and match them into strategies that are aimed at tackling challenges that you are facing, especially right now. So we're going to go into a few examples and a few strategies on how you can use the different products to tackle these challenges that we mentioned at the beginning. Feel free to share other types of challenges that you're facing in the feedback form that I'll share with you at the end of this live stream so that maybe we can schedule and create future webinars on the same topics. All right, first challenge. How do you help everyone feel connected while working from home? This is a challenge that we, we also have in our team, right? We haven't worked together for a while right now and we do need tools to still feel connected. Okay, a few tips. G Suite can really be your best friend here when it comes to working together and working better together. One thing that we do, for example, in our team is to have a regular stand-up meeting. So we have a regular stand-up meeting every morning so that we can chat and still feel connected. You can schedule that on Google Calendar, inviting everyone in your team, and then people can join directly from the calendar invite through Google Meet. And Google Meet works also from the phone, so people can join from the phone, they can join um, while they're walking, for example, we're thinking now to do some uh, meetings while walking so we can still move where we're at home. Um, that's just like a nice way to keep everyone connected and make everyone feel connected while working from home. One thing that is very, very useful for productivity now that we are not sitting at the office together and you can't ask questions to your colleagues on the go is to create a group chat for your team. Um, again, chat is part of the G Suite for Nonprofits suite, so you can create a group chat and people uh, can work like everyone in your team uh, is part of this chat and you can just like ask for quick information there One feels connected and everyone has access to the information they need. And again, last but not least, collaborate in real time from everywhere with Google Drive. 
using docs, using uh, spreadsheets, using presentations. The same file is shared with everyone. People can leave comments, people can collaborate, even across time zones and productivity just increases because everyone is working on the same version. Google Meet is what helps you connect with people and it's pretty simple to use Google Meet. Again, it's fully integrated with Calendar, so you can join meetings through your calendar. You can join meetings from the app on your phone. And there is a simple and unique dial-in number and URL, so there's no uh, risk of joining the wrong meeting because uh, the URL is unique and it's pretty uh, difficult code to replicate. So um, that can be unique and it's easy to everyone to join and one thing that it's very very important we've seen and now that everyone is working from home and sometimes connection is not stable is that you can adjust the video resolution and this really really helps when it comes to making sure the meetings can run smooth even if you have an unstable connection right now we also know that inclusion is important so with google meet you can get immediate translations and auto captioning so everyone can be fully present during the meeting. You can also use functions like chat, for example, to share the documents right in the meetings. Um, and uh, that's again, a very nice way to still feel like we're together in the same room. Google Calendar is useful when it comes to uh, sharing meeting with your colleagues, for example, organizing meetings. And it's just very, very easy to do that because it integrates seamless with all other GC tools, including Google Meet, again, as I was saying before. Uh, and you can join the meetings from the calendars, but also what's great is that you can see your colleagues' calendars. So, so when it comes to scheduling meetings, you can see when your colleagues are available and when they're free to join your meeting, they can change the meeting you created. So it's just a very quick way to organize uh, your meetings and meet with the colleagues. Also across time zones. As you can see here from the GIF, uh, you can uh, really like look at all the different calendars and schedule the meetings right away. And Google Chat, again, very important. You can chat from everywhere and you can upload items from Drive, for example, even join meetings from the chat. So for example, if you have a group chat for your team and you are discussing about something that is just quicker to discuss in a live meeting, everyone can join directly from the chat. So this, is increase, uh, this increases, of course, efficiency. And here in this GIF, you can see an example of real-time collaboration on a doc. This is very important when uh, it comes to make everyone, uh, make sure that everyone's voice is, uh, is heard and everyone can collaborate and everyone has the latest version of the document and they can leave comments or suggestions on the same. Real-time collaboration works across docs, sheets, and slides, so, uh, and even Google Forms. So you can really collaborate across any type of document that you are creating. Okay, second challenge. Recruiting and training new volunteers and more members now that recruit, recruitment, traditional recruitment pools are not a thing anymore and, and we need to do everything online. This is one of the challenges that a nonprofit shared in the survey that I was mentioning at the beginning. We're facing difficulties recruiting new volunteers or board members. So how do we move recruiting online? Here are just a few ideas, but you can organize a recruiting event with YouTube live streams, exactly like I'm doing right now from home. You can organize this recruiting event with YouTube live streams. You can explain about your organization and you can um, share what's your mission and you can share the projects that you're looking to fill in with volunteers. So it's just a great way uh, to present your nonprofit, but also to answer live questions through the live chat or live uh, directly into the live stream. 
you can promote your live stream the event can be scheduled exactly like we did with this event and then you can promote it with posts on social media for example email and much more uh, whatever channel you've used in the past to, to reach out to people online and then you can ask people to express interest with a google form online you'll see an example of a google form with the feedback form here but Google Forms is just a very, very good way to collect information uh, online because you can customize the form and you can add all the questions that you need in order to, for example, recruit volunteers or board members. You can ask for the names, you can ask for their contacts, but also for the motivation that drives them to apply. And then all the information that is collected through Google Forms online uh, to everyone from everyone that you're sharing the form with is directly um, shared on a spreadsheet so it's very easy for you to access this information but also to work on the information for example filtering in or filtering out information and so on so it's just very very practical and it's just a simple way to get rid of paper to have all the applications together in the same place and also make sure that people can share the applications with other people that might be interested for example you can use forms or everything you want for feedback on events you are delivering, for recruiting, for ideas on projects. It's just a very, very good way to crowdsource uh, information. Another pretty common challenging, challenge that we've heard recently is that it's impossible to train volunteers and keep them informed without live events. It can be challenging uh, for sure, but you can use again online tools to make sure that people have access to the information that they need. So to train volunteers and keep them informed, you can use Meet to lead uh, virtual trainings across locations and you can, thanks to the recording function that is available and with G Suite for nonprofits until the end of September, you can also record it and maybe post it on YouTube for people to access it later. So lead virtual meetings, record them. People can be trained across all the different locations. And then you can create a Google site. A Google site is an internal site that only people who have access to the site can, um, can, can visit. And on this site, you can keep, for example, all volunteer information in one place. In my team, we do have a Google site uh, internal for our uh, colleagues to um, access information about Google for nonprofits if, for example, they want to join our office hours or if they want to um, get in touch with us, collaborate with us, volunteer for our team. This is just a very good way for everyone in Google to get the access, uh, get access to the information about Google for nonprofits and be up to date with what's going on. Again, this is a very, very good way also to train your volunteers and keep everyone informed and on board members as well. And then you can also create volunteer mailing lists with Google Groups. So let's say that you have recruited your volunteers through a Google form. You can take all their emails and create a Google group and you will email that email list instead of emailing people email by email. So you can make sure you're not forgetting everyone, but it's also very, very quick to send information to all your volunteers because you have a list for all the volunteers. Again, sites is just a very, very nice way to inform and engage people. On a Google site, internal site, you can embed relevant content and resources. So, so for example, you can embed a training, you can embed a presentation, you can embed a calendar. If you have, for example, volunteering shifts that people need to cover, the calendar can be embedded on the site. And if I want to volunteer and I'm part of your organization, I can access the site and see, oh, there is a free spot for volunteering tomorrow. I'm going to sign up. So it's just a way to make sure everyone knows where to find the right information at the right time. Another challenge. How do you find new ways to engage with your supporters now that, for example, fundraising events are cancelled? Our top challenge is not being able to fundraise due to cancelled events. Typical challenge we've heard of, about it in our survey uh, from feedback of nonprofits that we've worked with in the past. So here are just a few examples on how you can grow your online presence. Google Ad Grants is definitely a good way and a good tool to drive online donations. 
You can create AdGrams campaigns and different campaigns according to your objectives, whether it's, for example, collecting donations, whether it's recruiting volunteers. AdGrams is a way to reach out to people who are searching for exactly what you offer. You can also use videos on YouTube to drive empathy toward your cause, explain about your mission and drive people to donate online. But also you can organize online fundraisers with live streams on uh, uh, Mean or YouTube if you want to open to the public. That's a very nice way, again, to engage with everyone and make sure that everyone knows about your nonprofit and the activities you're still carrying on. So again, like YouTube live stream, it's, it's not so complicated and you can create the event, promote it with your social channels and then ask people to, uh, to donate online whether it's through online donation tools or directly your website. Making your profit discoverable online with ad grants is, is a very good way to reach out to people that are searching for you. Ad grants has a YouTube channel where they have a lot of trainings and tips on how to optimize your ad grants account. We also just re recently reviewed our AdGrants activation process. It's now much easier to activate AdGrants, so feel free to have a look at our resources, the AdGrants Help Center and the AdGrants YouTube channel if you want to learn more about online advertising. I think this is a very, very nice case study because it just really explains the power of being present online and the power of AdGrants. This for, gir this for Girls is a nonprofit that um, works on educating young women about access to uh, uh, menstrual care. So this is a very nice quote from uh, the chief development officers of Days for Girls. She asked at Donor how she heard about Days for Girls and the donor replied that she googled feminist organizations and the Days for Girls ad grants ad just popped up on the search results. And that's how she learned about the organization. That's how she learned about the mission. And that's how she donated online. So online presence, it's very, very important to driving your, driving traffic to your website, reaching out to people that have a strong intent because you choose the keywords, you choose who you want to display your ad to because you're choosing the keywords you want to your ad to be shown for that's very very important and again you can create different campaigns to be um, for your ad to be shown when you're recruiting volunteers when you're recruiting new board members or when you are just raising donations and here is another um, challenge that we've heard from a nonprofit we recently got in touch with. It's a Venture to Impact. Venture to Impact is a nonprofit that transforms individuals, families and communities out of poverty. Their work is done mostly sending high skilled volunteers to travel abroad and work with projects, work on projects with local nonprofits. So as you can imagine, during um, the COVID outbreak, travel was just no more a thing. It's just no more a thing. So Venture to Impact had to find a way to still be able to reach out to the nonprofits that needed them the most and making sure that they could still connect highly skilled volunteers to nonprofits. So what they did, they used the Google Meet uh, calls with volunteers so volunteers were able to deliver the trainings to nonprofits with Google Meet they used the recording function of Google Meet so the training was recording and then it was posted on YouTube so it could reach a wider audience and this allowed them to continue supporting their partners safely and remotely using two tools that are part uh, of the Google for nonprofits program right now so meet recording function and YouTube And it's just a very, very nice quote that we have heard from them. Um, Google for Nonprofits allowed us to launch new programs quickly to engage our staff, partners and volunteers in meaningful ways and tackle problems that each community is facing with focused solutions. 
we've heard from many nonprofits that had to like sit down and just review and reorganize their operations. All right, we are going into towards the end of the live stream, so there's plenty of time for your live Q&A. But first, let's keep in touch. So we do have a newsletter that we send every month. You can subscribe to our newsletter directly in the Google for Nonprofits platforms if you go into setting and just um, enable the newsletter um, here, as you can see in the GIF on the left. But also please follow us on social. We post a lot of updates, tips and tricks there on all our social channels. We've also launched a community some time ago. So on our help center, you can ask post questions that other nonprofits can answer too. And also our experts and product experts look at the questions and can help you there uh, find the right answer. So engage with us on the community, engage with us on social and let's keep in touch through the newsletter because that's a very good way to be informed about upcoming live streams, product launches, events, and so on. Before going into Q&As, please share your feedback about this live stream. We want to know if live streams like these webinars are important, are useful to you. We want to hear about your thoughts and we want to have ideas on how we can be even more useful, especially at these challenges times so if you have training needs if you want to learn more about what google for nonprofits if you want to hear tips from other product experts please let us know share your feedback give us give us ideas for future webinars we're always happy to organize more okay some time for q and a i'm gonna put my camera back And I'm going to see if there is any question. Okay, first question. How do I upgrade from free basic G Suite to the $8 a month version? So the G discounted G Suite Enterprise. So it's it's very easy to upgrade to the discounted uh, um, enterprise and business editions for G Suite. You just need, if you're on G Suite for nonprofits, you just need to log in into your admin console and follow the steps to upgrade. The price that you will see if you're on G Suite for nonprofits, it's already the discounted price. So you do that through the admin console, you upgrade as you would upgrade to another, to like a traditional full price edition. But the price you will see will be automatically the price that is the nonprofit price because you are in G Suite for nonprofits. So that's um, that's very very um, quick and easy. On our help center, you can find detailed instructions on how to do that. Second question: If I have a Google for nonprofits account, how do I get access to the product? Don't I just automatically get approved for all the products? That's a very good question. It's probably something I should have mentioned at the beginning of the live stream. The Google for Nonprofits program, so when you get validated and you get access to the platform, that's the first step. So your nonprofit has been validated, you can get access to the Google for Nonprofit platforms, that means that you can get access to our products for free. But the products are not automatically enabled. You need to activate each and every single product. So if you wanna use GSIT, you will need to go through steps on the platform to activate G Suite. If you want to activate ad grants, you'll need to go um, through steps on the platform to activate ad grants and so on. We have just recently launched, as I was uh, saying at the beginning of this live stream, we have just recently launched a tips and tricks series on YouTube. So there are videos that explain you how to activate the different products. We're planning to launch a new one for YouTube as well in the upcoming days. So feel free to look at those videos. Um, there are detailed step-by-step -step instructions there, but also you can have a look at our help center and you will find instructions there too. Um, that's a very, very important thing. When you are on Google for nonprofits, if you don't activate the products, basically there's no advantage of being part of the program itself.
how do we join the Google for Nonprofits program? We are in Pakistan. Okay, we just launched in Pakistan. Um, we're very happy that you want to join the program. Uh, you can kick off the process to request a Google for Nonprofits account if you go to the Google for Nonprofits website. So google.com slash nonprofits. You can start the process there. The process is done online. So everything happens online. Um, you don't need uh, any type of uh, support uh, from our team. So you can do the platform is completely self-serve and that's how you activate the products. If you need detailed instructions, we do have a video for that as well, and you can use the Help Center too. Another question, what program would you suggest to carry out training programs for humanitarian work? We work with beggar communities and we don't have access to a lot of technology. So this really depends again on, on what your, what's the challenge that you're trying to solve right now. Um, so, for example, if you, if training is your priority and you are in GC4 nonprofits, you can definitely use Classroom to keep in touch with your students, make sure that they have all the materials that they need. You can also Google, use Google Sites to collect all the information that your students and people you train need, and you can deliver the trainings online, for example, using Google Meet. Google Meet is uh, actually free for everyone, so people can join your um, like meetings online and your trainings online, even if they are not part of your organization, they can join with their personal Google account and you can invite them to join with their personal Google account. So that's a very, very nice way to train people online. If you don't want to, for example, deliver a live stream on uh, YouTube and you want to keep the training more personal. How do I get help with each of the products? Um, each of the products, so th the great thing about Google for Nonprofit is that the products that are part of the platform are also standalone products. So G Suite is offered to also uh, businesses, right? Ad grants, Google Ads, it's offered to businesses as well. Same for YouTube. So each of the product has got uh, a help center. Ad grants, they have their own uh, YouTube account, as I was saying, their own health center, plenty of resources there to learn how to use the products. YouTube, they have a YouTube social impact channel. They delivered recently um, a live stream to teach people how to bring events online and how to use the power of live streams to connect to your audience. So check it out. We've also linked it into our playlist on the Google for Nonprofits channel. If you're in GC for nonprofits, you get access to 24 seven support uh, as well, like any other G Suite customer. G Suite has 24 seven support. You can reach it through chat, email, calls. So when it comes to any type of like technical issue, activation issue, you can reach out to them. And there was another question on YouTube fundraisers. Uh, I've heard about YouTube fundraisers. How do I set up one? So we used to, the YouTube nonprofit program used to have um, um, a donate card for videos. That feature doesn't exist anymore, but we have launched together with the YouTube giving team a beta for donation experiences. So for example, uh, if I am a creator, I'm an influencer, I can ask people to donate to an organization I care about and people can do that through a donate button that is just like slightly uh, below the video. Um, maybe you saw these online, so we're working to expand this program to make it available outside of Vita. So, um, We'll keep you posted. We are working on expansion. We'll like more user, more and more users to be part of the program. Um, we'll definitely make sure that when this goes out of beta and it's available more widely to the public, we announce that on social uh, and our newsletter. So definitely uh, let, let's keep in touch through our channels and that's the best way to be up to date with everything that's going on with the Google for Nonprofits program. Okay, another question is coming up right now. My organization is a program of a larger nonprofit. Can I get access to Google for nonprofits? So I'm assuming this nonprofit is probably in, uh, in the US and it's a fiscally sponsored program. 
So at this time, fiscally sponsored program, fiscal sponsored nonprofits are not eligible for their standalone account. But for example, what you could do is to get access to your sponsoring organization, Google for Nonprofits account. You may, for example, get an additional domain on G Suite. There are pros and cons for doing that, uh, but that's probably the best way for you to get access to um, G Suite for Nonprofits, for example, or the Google for Nonprofits program in general. Okay, there are no more questions as far as I can see. So I can ask a question to you. What kinds of deep dive webinars would you like to see? Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the feedback form. The feedback form is, let me pull it up. It's here, but it's also linked in the description box of this video. Okay, if there are no more questions, I think we can end the webinar here. But again, would you have other questions in the future? Use our community, um, follow us on social, engage on social with us, and we'll make sure to share all the relevant information with you and maybe organize future live stream together. Okay. Thank you very much for attending. I hope to see you soon in a future live stream.